If you strolled along a stream and found a beautiful horse grazing peacefully by the water's edge, what would you do? Would you greet him and stroke his neck? If he were saddled with no rider in sight, would you mount him for any reason at all? After all, horses are relatively harmless, right? As you stroke his neck, he nickers and begins to nudge you playfully, as if trying to entice you into a game. While you're thinking, what a charming animal this is, the two of you make eye contact, and you suddenly see something frightful. A disquieting intelligence in the horse's large eye. It's if he knows something you don't. Something about the knowing gaze sends a sudden and ominous chill through your body. You tense up and begin to pull away, only to realize in terror that your hand is stuck to the horse's coat. You tug again in confusion as you feel a growing sense of panic that makes your blood run cold. You look the horse in the eye again, only to see a self-satisfied countenance, and something else in his gaze, hunger. The horse begins to walk toward the water, effortlessly dragging you through the grass and mud. After kicking and screaming with no one in your shot, it finally dawns on you that there is no escape. Tales of things that seemed harmless at first, but in the end turned deadly, are not foreign to the people of Scotland, or to the Celts in general. There are an abundance of fairies and spirits, which are referenced in Celtic lore that you wouldn't want to encounter. For instance, the Kelpie, which is just one of the numerous versions of the water horse in the world. This large and often black horse is a shape-shifting water spirit or demon that haunts the country's lakes, rivers, and streams. It wanders the proximity, attempting to entice people, especially children, to touch or even ride him. Once touching the creature, the victim will be trapped, unable to remove whatever part of them came in contact with the Kelpie. The horse will then drag them into the water source it inhabits, drowning the unfortunate person before devouring all except for the internal organs. Although, in some stories, it's only certain organs the water horse will not ingest, leaving the remains to be washed up on the shore. Granted, it may be true the Kelpie's name is derived from the Gaelic word for cult. However, that is not the only form the creature takes. In numerous stories, it took the form of a handsome man trying to seduce women. In other tales, as a beautiful woman to lure men. Contrarily, there are a couple of things that distinguished them from humans. One obvious trait being that they still have hooves in their human form. Another telltale sign is that their hair will either be wet the whole time on land, or they have weeds from the water tangled in their locks. At one time, human sacrifices were made to the gods and spirits of the water, and some believe that very practice is what created the malevolent water horse. Perhaps, since humans stopped appeasing the spirit as Christianity spread through the centuries, the Kelpie came up to seek his meals on land. After all, there have been rumors of Kelpies at most large bodies of water all over Scotland. One particularly famous tale takes place at Loch Ness. In 1823, a man named William Grant Stewart publicized a book of Scottish legends in which is mentioned the tale of the long-familiar Scottish water horse, the Kelpie, believed to have occupied Loch Ness. The author obtained the story from a man named Wellox, who claimed to be the descendant of a man, James McGregor, who encountered the Kelpie of the Loch. According to the story, in McGregor's era, the locals in the region of Loch Ness were being terrorized by a Kelpie roaming the roads near the Loch. He presented himself as a saddled and bridled horse, seemingly innocent at first glance, before he drowned whatever rider mounted him. Rumors of the Kelpie's attacks grew widespread, leading McGregor to desire an encounter with the creature to end its life. McGregor did stumble across the riderless horse, grazing along the road. He realized that now he had his chance to confront the creature. He acted as if he was going to mount the horse, then quickly drew his sword and slashed the horse's face. The action resulted in parts of the bridle falling to the ground. McGregor picked up the Kelpie's bit and prepared to fight. However, the Kelpie didn't attack McGregor, but chastised him for his unwarranted attack. Despite the onslaught, the Kelpie promised to overlook the incident if his bit was returned to him. McGregor thought it strange how subdued the Kelpie seemed and realized that it had to do with the bit currently in his possession. Curiosity drove McGregor to test the Kelpie 
telling the creature that he may return the bit if the qualities of the bit were explained. The Kelpie readily stated that the bit was a gift from the devil, giving him the ability to shapeshift and overcome his victims. He also related that he wouldn't survive a day without the bit, and that the one who possesses the bit can use it against the Kelpie. Furthermore, if one were to look through the hole in the bit, they'd be able to see spirits. Once learning the power the bit wielded, McGregor decided against returning it to the Kelpie, a decision with which the beast was immensely displeased. As the man walked home, the Kelpie followed, speaking of how he dealt with others who dared slight him, although he would quickly backpedal and promise that there would be no retribution if his bit was returned. Periodically, the Kelpie made attempts to attack the Scotsman, only for the man to draw his sword again, subduing the beast, who would then try to barter once more. As McGregor approached his home, the Kelpie desperately placed himself between the man and the door, refusing him entry until the bit was returned. Nevertheless, the man wouldn't be barred from his own home. He walked around the house and tossed the bit to his wife through the back window before returning to the Kelpie and announcing that the bit was now in his house. The Scotsman told the creature this, knowing the Kelpie could not cross the threshold because of the wooden cross that hung above his door. Crestfallen, the Kelpie ambled away, all the while insulting James McGregor. According to the story, the family retained ownership of the bit. In contrast, I should mention that just because all Kelpie are portrayed as lethal, that doesn't always mean they kill indiscriminately. In some tales, they have been viewed in a positive light. Some Kelpies have been believed to give warnings of storms, or to have saved children from drowning, while others have been searching for companionship. There are so many different stories of the water horse all across Europe, all of which differ, but in the end, they all have a similar conclusion. They're all deadly. What do you think? Were the stories made to keep children from the water, or to explain their disappearance? Perhaps the stories were to teach travelers to be wary of strangers they meet on the road. Or maybe the story is based on more truth than most might think. If the stories that have been passed down for hundreds of years are anything to go by, one would be wise to remember, appearances are deceiving. <laughs>